Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. You know, boys and girls, jealousy is a terrible disease. And it's no respecter of persons. Yes, even Christians can get this horrible affliction if they don't let the Lord completely rule their lives. In our story today, Bill and the fellows run into plenty of trouble with a jealous man. Jealousy can be so powerful that it can even turn you against those you love most. You'll see what we mean in the story, The Jealous Stepfather. What's that sound? It's the ranger's snowmobile gliding along the highway into Knotty Pine. Bill and the fellows are returning from a tough day of snowshoeing through the forests, marking trees for lumberjacks to cut. When the forests get overcrowded with trees, the dense growth will keep out too much sunlight and injure some of the smaller trees. So the fellows have marked certain ones to be cut and snaked out to keep the rest of the stand healthy. Let's join the rangers inside their snowmobile. Uh, uh, sure put in a good day's work today, sonny. I'll be marking trees in my sleeve. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> you won't be alone, old-timer. Henry, turn the heat off, will you? It's making me too willing to saw wood. Okay. It's a good thing we aren't going up and down hills now. You fellows would fall to sleep like being rocked in a cradle. <laughs> uh, let's change the subject, shall we? Or I go sound to sleep, just as suggestion. <laughs> I hope you fellas don't mind that I'm going to open my window. Uh, go, go ahead, ahead Shelby. Uh, we almost to edge of town now. And not long until we stretch legs. Yeah, about ten minutes is all. Hey, Henry, uh, pull over and stop. Huh? Okay, right away. What's wrong? What's going on, Sonny? Do you see something? Yeah. I saw a boy walking along the road. Yeah, maybe he lives just a short way into town. This fellow is walking away from town. I wonder why that. Yeah. It's beginning to get plenty cold out now. Sun go down. And that ain't the only thing, Sonny. There ain't a house along the road he's traveling. Yeah, that's right. This highway runs right into the forest. Let's turn around and go after him. There's something wrong here. Right. If we let him keep going, he'll freeze to death by morning. <laughs> You better not walk out there tonight. Unless you got an electric overcoat on, it's going to be mighty cold. I'll be all right, mister. Don't worry about me. You must be joking, son. There isn't a house for the next 50 miles along this road. You better come in here with us. We'll take you home. I'll be okay. I don't want to go home. Uh, you better listen to Bill. You freeze to death if you keep going. I said I'll be okay, didn't I? Now leave me alone and mind your own business. What's wrong with him, Bill? He's talking through his hat. I don't know what's wrong. Hey, son, you get into this snowmobile right away, or I'll come out there and bring you in. You better do like Bill say. You not fool around. Oh, all right. But you aren't taking me home. We'll talk about that later. Come on, hop in. Well, I think you'll find it a couple of degrees warmer in here, sonny. Now, what in the name of common sense made you take this road out of town for a walk? Who are you mad at, anyhow? How'd you know I was mad at somebody? <laughs> Why, your face can be read like an open book. Why, the, the wrinkles on your face would make a fella think you're as old as I am. <laughs> oh, <it's not> <laughs> Pretty good. And smart, too. How can you tell that I'm mad? Well, what's your name, son? Gary De... Might as well tell us. You know, we'll find out sooner or later. How? Well, your folks will call the sheriff and... He'll tell us that you're missing, that's how. You tell us whole story, and then we try to help you with problem. That's part of our job, to help people in trouble. That's right, young feller. 
The sooner you tell us the whole thing, the quicker we'll be able to help you. Okay. I'm Gary Danforth. I live at 69 Pleasant Drive. But I'm leaving home because my stepfather doesn't want me there. All he does is kick me around and yell at me. How old are you, Gary? Fifteen. Perhaps if you went home, everything would be all right now. We all have misunderstandings at one time or another. No, I can't go home. Do you hear me? I can't. Um, what about your mother? You're probably worried sick by now. I know. Uh, you could call her and tell her I'm okay. But please, don't make me go home. I'll just get another beating if you do. Oh, I'm so glad you called, Mr. Jefferson. I've been so worried about Gary. He's safe and sound, Mrs. Danforth. However, he violently objects to going home. I'm afraid the boy has good grounds for that. Would you keep him there at least for tonight, please? Well, I don't know, Mrs. Danforth. This is really a problem for the sheriff and juvenile authorities. Now, this doesn't come under a ranger's jurisdiction. Mr. Jefferson, please don't call them the sheriff and the others. That would simply infuriate him beyond description. You've helped so many people. Won't you help me? Perhaps I'd better come to your home and talk with you, Mrs. Danforth. Uh, please do. I'll expect you shortly. I'll be there in a few minutes. Bye. Come in, gentlemen. Mrs. Danforth, this is Ranger Grey Wolf. He's one of my staff assistants. Grey Wolf also merits the same confidence you can put in me. I understand. Gentlemen, I married Jake Danforth after being a widow for several years. Jake works for the railroad. He's a section foreman. Mm -hmm. I've met him. Jake was all right for about a year after we were first married. He and Gary got along so well. Then Jake began to change. The change was hardly noticeable at first, but then it began to get worse. <laughs> Gary, look at your room. It's a mess. Yes, sir. I know. I've been working on a model airplane. I'll clean it up as soon as I'm through. You'll clean it up right now, do you hear? But I'm still working on my model. Are you talking back? No, sir. Just explaining. When your mother tells you to do something, you don't talk back. So don't try it on me, understand? Clean up your room right now. And no lip. How come you got all of Gary's clothes on the table, Arlie? I'm looking them over to see what new clothes he needs. New clothes? What's the matter with them? Some of them are getting shabby, Jake. Well, have them repaired. That's what I have to do with mine. Everything that's done around here is for Gary. What kind of a contraption is this you've slapped together? It's a birdhouse. <laughs> You'd never know it. Your mother expects me to do a perfect job of making things. And I expect the same from you. I, uh, hear that you refer to me as Jake and not as your father. Is that right? That's right. I'll call you dad when you treat me like a son. I've only touched on the high spots, gentlemen. Lately, Jake's been beating the boy for absolutely no reason at all. I'm afraid Gary's had enough of it. I'd say that Jake's got a bad case of jealousy, Mrs. Danforth. Um, there's no doubt about it. Oh, Jake. Is that brat of yours home yet? Huh. What are the rangers doing here? They found Gary walking on the highway. He's safe and sound. He won't be when I get my hands on him. I'll teach him to run away from home. You won't get that opportunity, Jake. Who says I won't? Bring him out here, Arlene, and I'll whip him within an inch of his life right here in front of the law. No, you won't. Gary's at Mr. Jefferson's home where he'll be safe. Is that so? Well, you get him over here right now or I'll have you arrested for kidnapping. Please, dear, don't talk like a fool. Bill, please keep Gary until we get this straightened out. 
Gary won't be brought home until I'm sure that he'll be treated like a boy should. Let's go, Gray Wolf. You ain't going to keep that kid. I'm going over there and take him away from you, badge or no badge. Don't let the badge scare you. I'll take it off. You're not getting the boy back until you can learn to treat him properly. <laughs> Gary, cheer up. Have some more flapjacks. Thanks. I hope everything is going to work out okay. I'm worried about Mom. Your mother's all right, Gary. Come on now. Eat a good breakfast. Open the door. Get in there. It's Jake. He's hey, after me. Door. Henry, keep Gary here in the kitchen. Oh, I'll see what Jake wants. Okay, Jake, I hear you. So you want to play rough, huh? Bill, your mouth's bleeding. Are you hurt bad? I'm all right, boys. Get back in the kitchen. Okay, Bill. Get up, Jake. Ranger, you got some power in your punch. I, I feel like I've been... Kicked by a mule. Now you listen to me, Jake. And listen hard. You found out it's a different story when you try to beat someone your own size. I talked with the sheriff, and he's letting me try to help you at my request. There's a law against beating children beyond the limits of normal punishment. Your wife or I could have you locked up right now. Yeah, we'll see about that. I got some rights, too, even though I'm only his stepfather. I'm sorry you're so jealous of Gary. Ha! <laughs> Ranger, you make me laugh. Well, I'm not jealous of anyone, especially that kid. Have it your own way. However, you can get rid of that jealousy if you try. You mind your own business and I'll take care of mine. That kid's my business and don't forget it. with it, you lazy louts. No man has time to breathe when he works for me. Well, maybe it's a good idea if you stop the breathing, you slave driver. Well, I'll clean all the teeth out of your mouth if you wise off like that once more. Get to work. This switch has to be replaced by noon. Hey, Tony. Shh. He didn't hit me, but he might have hit you, man. No, he wouldn't dare. Then me and the rest of the boys are going to see the super tonight at the work. Yeah. What about? About Jake. Either he goes or us. You, um, want to see me, boss? Yes, Jake. I've warned you several times about your slave-driving tactics... Your abuse of your men. Oh, I ain't abusing them, Clem. Just getting an honest day's work out of the lazy bums. Is that right? I can't allow this to go on any longer. You're fired. What? Why, of all the low-down tricks, I'll punch you right in the nose. Don't try it, Jake. I thought you'd take it this way. So I had a couple of the boys stand by. That's all. Your actions have more than justified my decision. Now get out. <laughs> What are you going to do about Jake? Perhaps a positive approach would work on Jake instead of a negative one. Uh. Jake's used to force and brutality to get what he wants. He knows how to defend himself against counterforce and physical punishment. Oh, I get it. Instead of trying to force Jake to behave, we use the kindness approach. A Christ-like way of showing him where he's wrong. Yeah. I think we can get through to him this way. He won't know how to protect himself against kindness and a Christ-like concern. Perhaps with the Lord's help, we can change him. 
especially if he'd turn to the Lord as his Savior. Mm, it sounds good to me, Bill. You have strong point. So far, we try to help Jake all by ourselves. We do better if we ask God to help us. I've got it. Ranger headquarters, Henry Scott speaking. Is Mr. Jefferson there? This is Arlene Danforth. It's for you, Bill. This is Danforth. Oh, thanks, Henry. Hello, Mrs. Danforth. Mr. Jefferson, Jake's in a terrible mess. He's in jail. Jail? Yes. Can you come quickly? I think you're the only one who can handle him. Jake's bellering like a wounded moose. He's really mad. You're not joking there, Stumpy. He belongs in an asylum. We laid his boss in the freight yard as he walked home and beat him badly. Four of my best men also took a beating before they got the cuffs on him. What's the charge, Cal? Assault and battery. Property damage and, well, not sure, but the assault and battery charge should have with intent to kill after it. Please, Sheriff, don't charge him with intent to kill. Jake's a good man, but his terrible temper al almost drives him out of his mind. He's also been going through trying times with Gary. He's almost insanely jealous of my son. Yes, I know. A lot of natural fathers go through the same thing he's going through as a stepfather. But he beat his former boss pretty badly. His former boss? Yes, he was fired tonight for abusing his men. I know he deserves punishment, but I keep hoping that something can be done to help him. You're a wonderful wife, Mrs. Danforth. Jake doesn't deserve the fine family he's got. Let me talk to him, Cal. I don't know, Bill. You're like a caged tiger. No, I'm not afraid of Jake, and he knows it. Let me see what I can do. Okay. I hope I don't have to haul you out of his cell in pieces. Let's go. Let me out of here. Come on, I'll tear you guys in pieces. You can't hold me. Let me out of here, Sheriff. You'll be sorry. You hear? You've got a visitor. Stand back from the cell door. Open the door, Cal. He won't come out. Okay. when I'm ready to come out, Cal. Okay, Bill. If he gives you trouble, let me know. What are you doing here, Bill? What's you up to? I want to help you if you'll let me, Jake. You're in serious trouble. Assault and battery could get you a stiff sentence, especially with your reputation as a war maker. What made you beat up your former boss? Well, I... I got mad. <laughs> The fine break a stepfather gets with his kid acting up. And then the boss has to act up, too. Jake, have you ever tried winning anybody over with love and kindness? Eh? Uh -huh. How about Gary? What have you done for him to make him love and respect you? Uh, the stepfather has three strikes against him right from the start. No, it's not true. If all stepfathers were like you, I'd agree, but... There are a lot of them who have won their hearts with love and kindness and companionship. In fact, there are some who treat their stepchildren better than their natural fathers did. Maybe so, but I'll never be able to do it. You can if you try. Jake, I'll go to bat for you on these charges if you'll promise me that you'll make a real effort being a good father and a peaceful man. Uh, what's the use? I get mad too easy. I, I've been this way for years. I can't change now. You can't change, no, but Christ can come into your life and change it for you. I don't get it. When a man will admit that essentially his rebellion and jealousy against his fellows is really against God, and will lay down his arms and ask for forgiveness, Christ himself will enter into his life and forgive him and Remain there to give him power. 
Well, a man can ask God for help to conquer his temper. Yeah, but what about the trouble I'm in? Jake, I'm willing to help you if you'll give God a chance to work in your life. Well, I, well, I don't know about this business of getting Christ in my heart, but I'll pray. Good. Although the only real answer to your problem is Christ in your heart and life. If you'll pray, I'm willing to help you. Okay, it's a deal. I promise to do my best. Fine. Now I'll get busy and live up to my part of the promise. Sure, I'll go home now. I'm not as scared anymore since you've explained things. I'm glad you came and talked to me, Bill. Jake's a good man. All he needs is self-control. I'll withdraw the charges. Sure, I'll let Jake out. Far be it for me to stop a man from changing the color of his spots from bad to good. I sure, Bill, me and the boys understand. I tell you what we do. We ask the boss to hire Jake back. If Jake will be a changed man like you say, then he'll be a good boss, okay? Bill, you, you lived up to your promise. Now I'll live up to mine. You wait and see. From now on, I, I'm a changed man. I'm going to really pray. Mr. Jefferson, I just had to stop by and thank you for the wonderful job you've done with Jake. He's such a different man. He's the good man I knew he could be if he tried. I'm pleased to hear the good report, Mrs. Danforth. The fellas and I have prayed for Jake. If he'll let the Lord control his life, everything will be all right from now on. Yes, I, I appreciate your prayers, gentlemen. I've prayed so long for this, and the Lord's answered so wonderfully. Well, I must run along to the market. Goodbye, and thank you again. Goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Goodbye, Mr. Danforth. Well, that's another job done, Sonny. And a good one, too. You're plenty right idea, Bill. You help him in a good one. Boy, I'll say. It sure did take a long time. Ranger headquarters. Bill, you better get down here right away. This is Clem. What's wrong? Jake's in a fight. He's got some men trapped in a train shed. Well, can't you take some men and go after him? Certainly I could. But somebody's going to get hurt. Jake's got a six-foot crowbar, and he's using it in the club. Okay, Clem, we'll be right down. Goodbye. Jake again? Yeah. He's running amok down in the freight yard. Henry, get Gary and meet us there. Is that the train shed ahead, Clem? Yeah, it's suicide to try and go in there, Bill. A couple of the boys almost got their heads bashed in trying. Gray Wolf, wait here for Henry and Gary. Bring them to the shed when they get here. But keep them back safely until I call for you. Oh, uh, I do. Stumpy, get your rifle ready to use, but only if necessary. You ain't going in there, Bill. What else? Uh, Jack, he kill you. He's like a madman. The boys are right, Bill. If you're going to use a rifle, you'd better make it count. I assume no responsibility otherwise. You won't have to, Clem. Are you ready, old-timer? Yep, I sure am. Let's get it done. All right, keep me covered. I'm no match for that crowbar if he gets a chance to use it. Let's go, but stay in back of me. Never mind about the back of you. You just watch out for that crowbar. Let's go. Jake! I'm coming in. Keep it back, Ranger. I'll use this crowbar on you just as quick as I'm going to use it on these guys. Now look out, the Ranger. He's right in the side of the door. I'm coming in, Jake. You come through that door and you'll get it. You ain't no friend. You're like the rest of them. Well, I'll show you what happens to guys like you if you come through that door. If you want to fight, come out and fight in the open like a man. Yeah, <laughs> and get shot. If you want me, come and get me. 
I'm coming right now. I'm waiting. Ray Wolf. I'm right here with Gary. What's the matter, Ranger? You yellow like the rest of them? Gary, talk to him. Call him Dan. I don't know if I want to. I'm waiting, Ranger. I'll be after you in one minute if you don't come out peaceful. <laughs> if you want me, come and get me. Gary, he still needs your help. If you don't talk to him, I'm going after him. He might get shot. Make up your mind fast, son. I can't leave those men in there with Jake much longer. Where are you, Ranger? Dad! Put down the crowbar and come on out. Please come out, Dan. It's me, Gary. Is that you, Gary? Sure, Dad. It's really me. Show yourself. So I know it's no trick. Watch him, Stumpy. Gary, we're going together. Walk alongside and a little back so I can stop him if he comes for you. Gray Wolf, get the boy out of the fireworks start. Where are you, Gary? Let's go. Talk to him, Gary. I'm right here, Dad. Drop the crowbar and come on out. Please, Dad. All right, son. I'm coming out peaceful. You, you haven't called me Dad in a long time. Do you really mean it? Sure I do. I wasn't sure a minute ago, but I am now. Thanks, son. From now on, I'm, I'm going to act like your dad should. Bill, I'm tired of fighting the world with my bare fists. Jake, you've still got your job. I found out the men were ridiculing you because you're trying to change yourself for the better. I know you were goaded into that fight. They won't do it again, or they'll be looking for work elsewhere. Well, Clem, I... I don't deserve this, but... Thanks. Jake, do you know what really went wrong? Yeah. I found out that you were right. Just praying to God for help didn't work. I... I forgot to pray. That business of having Christ in my heart, well, that's what I need. Right, Jake. Prayer is good, but Christ himself controlling our lives is the only answer to any problem. <laughs> See you next week for more adventure with Ranger Bill! Fellas and gals, Ranger Bill again, stepping in here for less than a minute to invite all of you out there to another half hour of adventure next week at this special spot on your radio dial. So next time, call up your friends or get together with them and join all of us rangers for a session of fighting forest fires, grappling with grizzly bears, or just plain trying to help somebody out. We're sure you'll enjoy the story and you might just learn something that'll be of real help to you in later life. So, next week, be sure to listen. <laughs>